Chapter 16 Japan Remakes Itself Section 1 Introduction Perry had destroyed Japan's isolation in the 1850s, bringing down the Tokugawa and bringing a new government. The actions of leaders from Satsuma and Choshu had strengthened nationalistic pride. Japan now needed a strong centralized government to modernize. Section 2. Political Leaders and the Throne The Japanese emperor had long been a figurehead with little political power. The emperor Komei was the last of the Tokugawa period and died in 1867. Komei's son, Mutsu Hito, then took the title of Meiji, or Enlightened Ruler, in 1868. Mutsu Hito was an ideal leader for the period of change. The Meiji period saw Japan become a major industrial power and imperial power. Though the period is called the Meiji Restoration, it is really a revolution. Traditional dressing was given to a thorough restructuring. Those who led the period were mainly from Satsuma and Choshu, and typically young. Ito Hirabumi, 1841-1909, was 27 in 1868 and became the period's foremost statesman. All came from humble backgrounds. They also had in common the assumption that it was impossible to oust all Westerners, but that they could keep Japan free from Western control. While they shared the Chinese resentment towards unequal treaties and other aspects of foreign incursions, unlike the Chinese, the Japanese were open to change. Section 3, The New Order Beginnings The Charter Oath At the bidding of the new government, the emperor issued the Charter Oath in the spring of 1868. Based on laws of nature, and intended to extract support from daimyo that hesitated. Its most famous clause was that, quote, Knowledge shall be sought throughout the world, so as to strengthen the foundations of imperial rule, end quote. Xenophobia was not tolerated. Administration The capital was moved to Edo, now called Tokyo, or Eastern Capital. The emperor was carried to Tokyo in state in May 1869, and Iyasu's castle was made the palace. Both the area under Tokugawa rule and that of the Han were divided into prefectures. The daimyo of Satsuma, Choshu, Tosa and Hizen gave their domains to the emperor. Others followed suit. Military rebuilding. In 1871, an imperial force was created from Satsuma, Choshu, and Tosa forces. The navy was led by Yamagata Aritomo, 1838 to 1922, of Choshu. He became the first army minister when he returned from Europe. A draft now called up all fit adult males for three years of service, making a mostly peasant army. The daimyo were allowed to keep 10% of Han taxes. Samurai got two-thirds of their previous stipends. Financial problems. Payments to daimyos and samurai made the poor financial picture worse. Loans were obtained for railway construction, but the Japanese were loath to indebt themselves too much. Instead, loans were obtained from merchant firms, and money was printed. The land tax was revised to a fixed tax based on land value. The samurai stipends were further reduced, and in 1878 were given bonds in place of their stipends. Similarly, the daimyo were also given government bonds. In 1876, the samurai were forbidden to wear swords. The peasants found the new tax difficult to pay and called the conscription a blood tax. Overseas Aggression in Satsuma Rebellion In spite of difficulties, Japan set out on military actions. Such undertakings might distract opponents. It was also seen as good employment for samurai. Saigo Takamori, 1827 to 1877, planned a punitive mission to Korea, but the plan was canceled when the mission to the west returned. 
Saigo was from Satsuma. He resigned when the mission was canceled. An expedition to the Ryukyu Islands and Taiwan was planned instead. The excuse was the killing of sailors by Taiwanese. The campaign was a success, but the Qing, sovereigns of both areas, were resentful. The affair ended with Japan in control of the Ryukyus. The Japanese then forced Korea to open two ports. Though these expeditions were successful, they did not wholly distract the samurai. Saigo had taken many of the Satsuma samurai home with him when he resigned. In 1877, they rose in revolt, the Satsuma Rebellion. The revolt was quickly put down. Economic Development Meiji leaders assumed that to achieve the ideal of, quote, rich country, strong army, end quote, they would have to build up their economy. The government subsidized iron, steel, armaments, and shipbuilding industries starting industries with government money and then handing them over to private ownership created close partnerships. Mitsubishi started this way as a steamship line. These partnerships were at the root of Saibatsu, which were industrial as well as financial conglomerates. Internal communications were a priority. All major cities had been linked by 1880. Telegraph and postal systems followed national effort. A widespread understanding that development was critical to defend Japan and save it from unequal treaties aided these efforts greatly. The country's small size meant that decisions could be rapidly communicated. Peasant resentment of taxes was a major exception. However, peasant soldiers took pride in their role in the army. Agricultural production increased. The People's Rights Movement, beginning in the 1870s, represented mostly affluent landowners and entrepreneurs. The government pushed for a parliamentary government. The government deliberately moved slowly and created a National Assembly in 1890. Industrialization From 1871 to 1873, leaders of the new government toured the U.S. and Europe. Iwakura Tomomi 1825-1883 led the Irakura mission, the goal of which was to end unequal treaties. The mission returned convinced that modernization was necessary. The Ministry of Industry was established in 1870. A variety of industries was encouraged. Textiles were the first industries to succeed. Government subsidies were key since the West had the lead and initially provided all of the machines. The silk industry was important, using as it did a domestic product. Japanese silk replaced Chinese silk in exports. By the 1880s, silk brought in over 40% of the country's foreign exchange. Finance continued to be a problem, with the issuance of more paper money causing inflation. In 1880, the government began to sell industry to private owners. Those who bought did so from patriotic as well as financial motives. In 1876, the economy was strong enough for the government to reduce land taxes. The resultant rural prosperity spawned new industries. Westernization The Japanese enthusiastically adopted many elements of Western culture, Legal reform was based on French and German originals. Missionaries arrived in 1859 with more success than in China. At the same time, Shinto was revived. Reverence for the emperor was cultivated, yet secularism was encouraged and many Japanese were sent abroad to learn and advisors from abroad brought in. Fukusawa Yukichi, 1835-1901, was a major proponent of Western knowledge. He founded a school that became Keio University in Tokyo. Fukuzawa also authored many works promoting Western institutions. Compulsory education was initiated through sixth grade. By 1905, 95% of the population had gone through the public education. Missionary and other private schools also spread. Representative government was harder to introduce. Despite the assemblies promised in the Charter Oath, change here was slow. 
nascent parties were eliminated by the 1887 Peace Preservation Law, which gave the government great scope to deal with critics. The Meiji Constitution Ito Hirabumi was asked to form a constitutional commission. In 1885, he made himself prime minister over a cabinet. Then in 1887, he put in place an examination system for the civil service. A constitution was introduced in 1889, which called for a national assembly and a diet with two houses. The lower house held most power, though the upper aristocratic house also had to approve the budget. The emperor was given status to command the military and was able to dissolve the diet. The ministers of war were serving generals and admirals, giving the military great power. Arguably, the authoritarian element of this government was to be disastrous for Japan. Section 5, Japanese Imperialism Background Korea was already considered as a target of imperialism. The Japanese legation in Seoul was attacked in 1882, and China and Japan sent troops. In 1884, the Chinese and Japanese troops started fighting. Li Hongzheng and Ito Hirabumi met in Tianjin in 1885 and concluded the Li Ito Convention, under which both withdrew their troops. China had finally begun adopting Western weapons. A Korean revolt led to the king to ask China for aid. Both China and Japan sent troops. China was finally begun adopting Western weapons. A Korean revolt led the king to ask China for aid. Both China and Japan sent troops. Japan seized Korea and forced it to declare war on China. Japan easily defeated China, occupying Korea and invading Manchuria. The Treaty of Shimonoseki imposed a huge indemnity on China and gave Japan sovereignty over Taiwan and the Pescador Islands. The Japanese saw themselves as now taking their rightful place in Asia. Manchuria was the next target. The Treaty of Shimonoseki had given them territory in the Liaodong Peninsula. Basing a fleet in Port Arthur would allow the Japanese to control much of the coast. However, Russia, Germany, and France convinced Japan to give up Liaodong, the triple intervention. The Japanese were resentful of this pressure, especially from the countries which Japan had so reverently emulated. Shortly after Russia took Liaodong and Port Arthur, the Germans, British, and French took Chinese territories, and the U.S. took the Philippines and Hawaii. Russia extended its sway by the rights it gained in mining and railroads in Manchuria. The Boxer Uprising brought an increase in European influence. In 1902, Britain and Japan signed a mutual support treaty. Conflict with Russia. The Russo-Japanese War from 1904 to 1905. Japan was divided between those who felt they could accept Russia's gains and those who thought war was necessary. Japan attacked Russian-held Port Arthur and Seoul and then declared war. The Japanese were successful on land and at sea. Theodore Roosevelt was asked to mediate a peace treaty. The peace treaty was held at Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Japan's interest in Korea were acknowledged. Russia ceded Laodong to Japan, though many Japanese were disappointed. There was indignation from those who thought the treaty was wrong, as well as those that had wanted more. The war had bankrupted Japan. Russia was glad to finish the war because the revolution was beginning there. The U.S. issued more open-door notes to contain Russian ambitions. Japan in Korea The Korean king gave Japan control over Korea's foreign affairs, managed by Ito Hirabumi as resident general. The king abdicated, and the crown prince succeeded him, was more cooperative than his predecessor. Korea was forced to disband its army. Ito was killed, and as a result, Korea was declared part of the Japanese Empire in 1910. These victories brought elation in Japan. Ultra-nationalist sects such as the Black Dragon Society emerged, calling for further conquest. Assassination became a common way for such groups to eliminate politicians that dragged their heels. 
Meiji died in 1912 and was succeeded by Taisho, who was mentally incompetent. World War I Because of the Anglo-Japanese alliance, Japan joined the war on the side of the Allies. German territory in China was taken with the reasoning that Germany was an ally enemy. This was the extent of Japanese involvement in the war. China fought the Germans, hoping for Allied sympathy after the war. In 1915, Tokyo presented a list of demands to the Allies that would have given them control of China. President Yuan Shiki agreed, and Russia, Britain, France, Italy, and the United States sanctioned the demands. Japan was included in the Versailles Peace Conference in 1919. Following the Russian Revolution in 1917, Japan sent forces to Russia and occupied Vladivostok. Western powers that had sent troops to halt communism withdrew their troops in 1919, but Japan stayed until 1922. Wartime inflation hurt Japan, with resultant rice riots and riots among factory workers. Section 6. The New Japanese Empire Taiwan and Korea were exploited to feed Japan. Taiwan was treated less aggressively. A declaration of independence by some Chinese in Taiwan was easily opposed by Japan. As in Korea, Taiwan's first railways and modern coal mines were Japanese works. Koreans were treated especially badly. Korean food consumption declined seriously. Japanese rule was racist. Japanese rule in Manchuria was more constructive. Section 7. Meiji Culture and Accomplishments Emil Zola was particularly popular. Natsumi Soseki, 1867-1916, was and is widely read, especially his Kokoro. In painting, Kuroda Seiki, who died in 1924, worked in a distinctly Western style. Japan won its battle to lift British extraterritoriality in 1899. Ito Hirabumi was a central figure in these developments. Ito was both conservative and open to change. He visited Europe and America. He was for compromise and westernization. Though he was an ardent supporter of the emperor, he also hoped to make representative government a possibility in Japan. Japan was divided between the military supported by ultranationalists and intellectuals hoping for less autocracy. With the end of the Meiji era, the oligarchs that had led that period were not replaced, leaving the military to lead. The Taisho democracy followed.